let's talk about Blockbench. All right, we find ourselves back on Blockbench.net indeed, because here we are basically talking about Blockbench, the 3D model editor that is going to allow us to, well, make not only custom item models, but also custom block models and maybe even custom block entities. Really, really awesome. So let's just jump right in. First of all, of course, you need to go to blockbench.net and actually download the actual program. You can see we have an installer here for Windows, Linux, and also macOS. So absolutely no worries. Whatever operating system you might be using, it's going to work. I, of course, use Windows, so we're just going to download the installer. After the download is done, simply install Blockbench like any other program. Once installed, a window similar to this should open, and you can see we have some very interesting things indeed. So under the new category, we basically wanted to choose Java Block Item, because in our case, we're making block and item models for the Minecraft Java Edition. So if you select this, you can type in a file name, so we can just say Test Item, for example. We're basically going to leave everything like this. We're just going to say Confirm. And then we are inside of Blockbench. To rotate the camera around, you can hold the left mouse button and just move the mouse. You can see then we're rotating around the, well, actual object. Now, of course, we don't have anything yet, but that is the general idea. So we then rotate the camera. If you want to move the camera, we can hold right mouse button. For zooming, we just scroll in and out. So nothing too crazy. Those are the basic controls that you actually are going to need. So how do we now add something to our custom model over here? Well, on the right side, on the outliner, we can add a cube. And if you add this, you can see a whole bunch of other stuff is added. We can see that we're currently selecting this cube. So the element shows some of its properties, the position, the size, the pivot point, as well as the rotation. And on the left, we also see the UV map. This is basically for the textures. We're not going to be worrying about the textures right now. Right now, we just want to basically look at this cube. So if we just zoom in a little bit and just go down, right, you can see this is the cube and we have these three arrows. With these three arrows, we can now move the cube, right? This is along the X axis, this is along the Z axis, and this is along the Y axis. So this is the move mode. You can see the different modes up here. We can also go into resize mode. You can always see at the very end of it, it says move V, move resize S, rotate R, pivot P. You can also always use the letters here to switch around. So S is going to resize, V I'm going to be able to move mode and so on and so forth. Rotate mode, that is going to be that. So let's just go to resize mode and let's just size this up. You can see now I'm sizing this up and there you go. And a little bit more in this direction as well. I sort of have a base plate. You can see size 16 by 16 and one height, right? So this, these are the sizes. And a normal block is, of course, 16 by 16. So this would take, in theory, one entire block, but only one voxel high, so to speak. So this is very akin to, for example, having a layer of snow. I can deselect the actual cube by just clicking into the outliner here and then all of the additional information will disappear. I can reselect it just by clicking it. And let's say, for example, I want to rotate it around. You can see it now rotates around this particular thing because that is the pivot point. If we actually want to center the pivot point, what we can do is we can just go to center pivot point. And now if I rotate it, you can see it actually rotates around its actual middle point because the pivot is now centered. So those are some of the basic controls in Blockbench. So you can see, right, we can just change this about and we can actually go very quickly doing something. If you want to add another cube now, you can just add another cube over here and we can now move this about as well, right? We can scale it up, move it about and do all sorts of crazy things over here. You can see, there you go. So all sorts of fun. If you want to group them together, you can add a group and you can select multiple ones by clicking on one and then holding shift and clicking on the other. And you can see now we can put them all into the group. You can also rename them by double clicking on an element in the outliner and, and then just naming it full block, for example. And if you then select the group, then you can see you're actually selecting all of the different parts below it. So you can also move them together. You can also resize them together. Now, sometimes this has some unintended consequences, especially if you're rotating them together, because you can see the pivots are sometimes a little bit weird. So keep that in mind that that sometimes does not work the way you would intend to. When it comes to the textures, you can import textures over here. So if you already have a texture, let's say something like this is just going to be an example over here, then you can just import it and you can just drag it in. And you can see now it takes this texture. You can resize the UV map so you can see that the texture then resizes as well. They can do all sorts of crazy things. You can also see that there are different UV maps for, well, I mean, the bottom, the top, and so on and so forth. If you want to select all of them, you can just hold shift while clicking on them, and then you select all of them. Now, all of them are going to have this particular texture, and I'm just going to rescale it again. And you can see, of course, it looks absolutely hideous, 
However, it does have textures on all sides now. Making proper textures is actually not that easy. That is something that is going to take a long time to really do. So let's just do Control Z to get completely out of this. And you can also go into paint mode, which might be a little bit more interesting for you. So you can basically paint the individual voxels over here. So let's just say I maybe want this to be a gray color. You can see, you can see I currently can't paint on this, right? This surface does not have a texture. So if you just create a texture, right? Pixel density 16, call it texture, that's fine. You can see that each face of this particular cube now has its own different layer of texture, basically. So now I can come in here and you can see at the top left that the particular texture actually changes, but we can still draw onto the actual 3D model, which is pretty freaking awesome indeed. Now, getting the textures right and getting everything here, you know, sorted, getting a cool texture, cool model, definitely can take a little while until you get this all right and until you, you know, make something that you also think is like, pr looks pretty cool and awesome. However, it all comes down to just trying a bunch of stuff out and seeing what you basically can come up with. Let's create another texture for the other one as well. And you can see now I can basically just make this something like maybe a green or something like similar like that dark green over here. And you can see sometimes, you know, you're, you're bleeding over. You can always use control Z to basically undo your steps. So maybe something like this. And then you can see it all automatically switches to the other texture when I'm tr starting to, you know, do some things with the other cube as well. Fill this one up as well. And let's just do this one in green as well. And you can see now I have a block that's, you know, very much nondescript but it is a custom block shape nonetheless. So that's the rough idea for the controls of a block bench. In the next tutorial, we're gonna make a custom item. And then in the tutorial after that, we're gonna make a custom block itself. If you wanna save this, you can simply go to file and save project. And you can see test item.bb model. So it's going to be a BB model file. Just save it and there we go. Now it is saved and we can resume work whenever we want to. Exporting the model to use in your mod, we're gonna see that in the next two tutorials. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, that's gonna be it for the basics over here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.